Okay, so here we were at um, the airy and the water, okay? Right, so, so right now, uh, um, so we what, have what, what's happening in, in the arrhythmia world or the anthroposophical world is that they, uh, the, there's an understanding of these three disciplines mm -hmm. in the arrhythmia. Mm -hmm. and, you, and, you know, there's, uh, I think a lady even, uh, Sylvia Bart maybe, has written a book and she talks about, you know, how arrhythmia is threefold. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I think Cynthia Hoven did an article in uh, Conscious Dancer some years ago, mm -hmm. uh, an international or national m magazine about dance movements. Mm -hmm. And there again, it, it gets repeated that you know arrhythmia is a threefold thing. Mm -hmm. And this mm -hmm. this this is, is a misnomer. This is yeah, not, it's not enough. No, no, no. Because if you think holistically, it can't be. No. There needs to be a. We form. have to include the earth. <laughs> yeah, we gotta include the earth. <laughs> So we have Earth, and we have applied, applied arrhythmia. Applied arrhythmia. You see, and it's this connection between our watery self and our earthly self. Yeah. And um, because that's the only way we can experience really from starters, because we do have a, we do have a physical body. We have to kind of get into that somehow. <laughs> yeah, which also means inhabiting our lower centers. Exactly. And so what's been happening in the anthroposophical society and in the arrhythmia circle is that any time. Uh, any, any of uh, the etheric movements uh, are remotely athletic or vigorous or sensual or dance-like, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. then the anthroposophists in the rhythmists, are, they, they say, oh, that's physical movement. Mm -hmm. See, and then they, and they, as though it's something that's not good. Mm -hmm. and, that's, and, and, then they, and then there's this tendency towards, in the training centers, to um, to pretend that the training centers are going to teach you how to move etherically. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it's our birthright mm -hmm. to move etherically. Mm -hmm. No one's mm -hmm. going to teach you how to move etherically. Mm -hmm. People can, can teach you how to discover your etheric potential yes. that you're born with. Yes. But you're not going to train it into somebody. No. no. It's something that you're, it's our, like I said, it's our birthright. Yeah. It's not something you can buy or... Or, you can't or live. Acquire. You cannot live without it. You can't live without it. You can't and, peel potatoes without it. No, exactly. So you see, this is a, a descent. Yeah. This is descent into matter. Mm -hmm. This is descent into the earth. And mm -hmm. what's happening is that it's it's stuck right here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just stuck right here mm -hmm. because there's this lack of understanding of a holistic paradigm mm -hmm. and using holism as our tool to do our spiritual investigation. Yeah. And it's causing a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. What's mm -hmm. been happening is that, uh, you know, people are, uh, your trained eurythmists are coming into classrooms and they're teaching children, you know, artistic rhythmy uh, and, and some curative rhythm exercises through the art of the pedagogy. And there's lots of incredible, important work being done here. Mm -hmm. but what's happening is these children, uh, since there, there's, no, there's no science of eurythmy, there's no seeing it. It, that it, it's these laws of speech and movement are universal and that they are they are it, it's speaking to all movements mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not just the dancey little etheric ones that mm -hmm. are, you know the classical mm -hmm. stuff. these children are having an adverse effect to what they're being told and mm -hmm. that's a really natural healthy uh, response to something that's that's not correct not not only that the culture is putting children on a chair they don't let them move. Yeah. I, I, I saw this morning the, there was something on the internet that there is now um, a, a disease that children have because they constantly want to run and jump and sing and... Oh, and, they call that a disease? Yeah, well, I mean, tongue and cheek. Yeah, well, they, there's all Tongue and cheek because the children no, are not, not uh, allowed They're not to. behaving. <laughs> yeah, in other words, they're not behaving like adults. Yeah, exactly. You know, adults just sit. Yep. And they don't do anything else. So I Sit think, and consume. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, uh, in other words, uh, the children, the children are not really incarnating into their physical body. No, they're not. So. So 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 what's been happening in the anthroposophical society and the rhythmic circle is that they've they have separated out in in their minds, and we can do this levity and gravity. Yeah. And and the, and 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 not, not only that, it's associated with what this whole concept of separating out levity and gravity. Uh, in order for us as human beings to experience levity, this, this buoyant feeling, mm -hmm. we have to fall mm -hmm. in space. We have to fall. Mm -hmm. Falling is how, mm -hmm. we, how, we, how 
the, the sense of falling and that sense of weightlessness that mm -hmm. happens when you fall, mm -hmm. it, it, it speaks directly to that lag in our, in our water body. Yeah, you see, it comes after. It, I think when exactly. you wake, sometimes when you wake up, you can feel, or when you're falling asleep, you can feel that. Yeah, that I don't lag, know. yeah. You know, you can actually... Well, it's helped me a lot because I've had a very, I, you know, I've had a, a great difficulty in sleeping mm -hmm. over these years. Mm -hmm. And when I give myself over to gravity... Uh, Maybe you can show me a little bit how you fall because yeah. uh, just go over to the carpet or something. Well, well for example, um, and, and maybe this is a side note, but there's, um, there's also what's happened in our, 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 our eurythmy circles, I'll make it speak maybe directly to eurythmists, mm -hmm. a sort of a misnomer of, uh, between these two different modes that Rudolf Steiner spoke about. One's called the Apollonian mm -hmm. mode, oh, right. and one's called the Dionysian mode. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, it was very interesting. Uh, Frau Zuckerli, who mm -hmm. was my teacher, when she was my teacher, she was 90 years old, and she actually uh, was one of the last surviving uh, eurythmists that worked directly with Rudolf Steiner. Right, right. And Frau Zuckerli brought us all into uh, a room in the Gertianum, and we were uh, having a workshop with her there because she was doing a lecture in an, an adjacent room. And, mm -hmm. and so our class was about 13 or 14 people, and and it was our fourth year, and we were supposed to know what we're supposed to be doing, I guess, at that time. And she said, okay, I want everybody to move in a, in a Dionysian way. So everybody, you know, Di Dionysus, you know, that's the god of wine and, re and re revelry. Right, right. And so we were all, you know, we were just, you know, we were just doing all kinds of stuff, you mm -hmm. know, like animals. We were mm -hmm. jumping around mm -hmm. and, 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 and bending over and, and standing up and mm -hmm. doing, and she goes, wow, stop, what are you doing? She goes, oh, okay, Apollonian. And then we were all like, like gods. Oh, yes. And the goddesses. We were all upright. Yes. And we were all pristine and we uh -huh. stepped dancerly like. And right. And we were moving around the room, all this upright, noble sort of way. Yeah. And she goes, oh, you have learned nothing. Uh -huh. You've learned nothing. Uh -huh. And we're like, what? We're all confused. <laughs> uh -huh. There we go. And this stuck with me. She goes, don't you understand that the Steiner spoke about if you're going to move in the Apollonian, it's bending in the Gestalt. Uh-huh. And if you're going to move in the Dionysian, it's upright, upright. in the Gestalt. Yeah. So you, have the, you, so you have the straight line and the curve. Not only that, you have a relationship to gravity. Yeah. When you're in the Dionysian mode, you mm -hmm. see, I'm upright. Mm -hmm. the, the forces of gravity have very little purchase upon my being. Mm -hmm. It's just what's exposed here. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Mm -hmm. When I bring my arm out, of course, the gravity will take more purchase upon my body. When I lean over, you see, gravity has more effect, more purchase, more surface area to, to effect upon. Mm -hmm. See, that, that's a really important concept. Yeah. Because in Eurythmy, we have to start looking at the science of it. What do you mean by... It, a Dionysian is upright, and, and, and that because and then Apollonia is bending in the stalk. Because when we bend out, and, and gravity has more purchase upon us, we become less ourselves, mm -hmm. and more the environment. That's what happens to, to old to, people. To the point where that's when, what happens to see, old people. See, exactly. So when I lay down, you see yeah. what happens. I have the most maximum effect. The gravity has its most maximum purchase upon my body. What happens? I go out of myself. Yeah. I'm less of me. Yeah, and you're going to you're going to go to sleep. And I'm you're going to go to sleep. Unconscious. <laughs> unconscious. It's unconsciousness. Yeah. And so that's why when the yogi sits in an upright position because they 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 they're only allowing this triad. Yes. This this, this sort of tetrahedral uh, chestahedron yeah. shape. Yeah. Because really, actually, when we sit in in, in this position. We're actually creating that shape right there. Yeah, yeah. This tetrahedron is, yeah. I mean, the, this chestahedron is this, is this shape. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, you know, you could even, you know, start, you make, I mean, it's incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but the thing is, is that, I, you know, the gravity has less purchase upon me. So what's helped me to fall asleep at night is that when I lay down, mm -hmm. I just, I just relax. I let my water stratify. Because mm -hmm. my water is now being affected more by the gravity, and the water starts to settle, and, I, and my body starts to stratify, and, and I can feel this movement of gravity going through me, 
but what happens is that you are you this other part of you is can le out, do levity is going out of yourself yeah yeah you go yeah. out of yourself and I yeah. fall asleep and of course people have endless problems uh, trying to go to go sleep to sleep and that's they really can't. helps a lot right I mean, it's me what it happens what happens when when people sleep on their side then because you, you, you go out, it takes a little longer to go out. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. Because you just have to look at, at the physics of things. Yeah. You have to look at the physics of your rhythm. And that's, that's, that's what's been missing. The phenomenological approach to your rhythm is applied your rhythm. Yeah. It's not just taking these pedagogical, artistic, and curative exercises into the workplace and having the workers do your rhythm. That's mm -hmm. not the fourth discipline of your mm -hmm. rhythm. No, no. We have, to, we have to now take the science of it. He gave us all the tools that we needed, Rudolf Steiner. Yeah. And yeah. we need to start applying them. And that's why you call it applied Apply eurythmy. Applied eurythmy, because you see, you see what's what's really at stake here is 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 the health and well-being of our children. Yeah. You know, they're having a uh, they're having a normal response to something that is, an, a, a crazy in a sense. You know, mm -hmm. this this tippy toeing around, this artistic mm -hmm. eurythmy that they mm -hmm. just because uh, as I say, you know, what what's been happening? You know, as above, so below. I have a belt because yeah, whatever I can do here, I can pretty much do down here too. Yeah. 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 See, and yeah. there's been a big no-no in accessing these lower movement centers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'll have to do say, that again. Do that again. How you just did that with the legs. Oh well, you know, I, I could do. You yeah, know, you can do that, that too. And, 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 and what, what I'm making is an L. Yeah, exactly. You see, this is L movement. Exactly. Or you know, if I go the other direction, it's an R. R movement. So you know, like when you ride a bike, you yes, see, yes. you're doing a lot of R's. Yes. Or when you're swimming. You, this rotation yeah. is an R rotation, yeah, yeah. as opposed to this rotation, which is an L rotation. L rotation. It's, it's funny it's, that you have to do an R rotation in order to swim. <laughs> well, you can do the backstroke. Yeah, 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 and then you and go that, the other way. Rotation. Yeah, yeah. You see, we have to look at the physics of our movements. Yeah. And, and um, you know, it's not enough to, uh, to just imitate all the time. Yeah. Uh, imitation is our, is, is our birthright also. Yeah. But it has to do with this chakra. Yeah. And th this chakra is the Im imitative chakra. It, it, it's sympathetic. It, it, it moves and, it, and it's in sympathy with the environment, whether we like it or not. I mean, when yeah. you're talking, my larynx moves, I can feel it. Exactly. Yeah. So we, it's, it's our birthright, this chakra. Mm -hmm. But this chakra, as you know, this organ, uh, in, in, in embryology, Dennis Klocek speaks about this in mm -hmm. his lectures. And the other people too, like Jap van der Waal and... Um, yes, that, that yeah. our, our second chakra, our, our procreative organs, yeah, yeah. we're actually together in, 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 as a one node. Yes. And they separate Oops. out into their perspective locations. Exactly. They, they, so when, when children are born, this one's already operative and yeah, awake. Yeah. And this is the imitative organ. We learn speech, not through theory. And, and through, you know, we, we learn it through imitation. Yeah, yeah, so that's great. our first, that's what our first uh, way of learning is. And then the, the, but the learning that you're talking about has to come through science, which has to be done consciously. Yes, well, here's, here's the thing, is that this second chakra, which mm -hmm. is associated with our, our gonads and our, our ovaries, mm -hmm. our, our procreative organ, yeah. it's, it's our collaborative organ too. Yeah. You know, it takes two to tango. Right. We can't, you know, I mean, science has now made it so that we don't have to tango anymore and we can, we can create babies in a petri dish. You know, there's reasons for that, but, but this, it, what it's, if we look at the physics of it, it's just telling us that we, that's a collaborative organ. And it doesn't have to just be sexual. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we can sublimate that energy and put it into science because it's also, these, this, this organ down here is also very phenomenological. Yeah. You see, so what, what's... Um, What's been happening in Eurythmy is that there's been a lot of imitation and there's very little, you know, see, if, if you, what's been happening is that people aren't accessing this lower nature. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and, and well, I, I'm kind of losing my train of thought, but what, there's, there's something, let me just show you something that's very important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's, there's something been going on in, in anthroposophy. Uh, it's called bareback singing exercises. Oh yes, uh huh. These beautiful exercises on, on how to how to. Uh, it's a singing training. It's a discipline in singing, a specific way. And Verbeck worked with Steiner, and she developed these exercises. And what you do is you sit up on the edge of your stool, and you, and you're upright, and and you visualize. I'm not a Verbeck singer, but I understand the concept behind it. You visualize that. Um, you you you. Um, Sorry, you um, 
you intone and they give you certain things to say like like nim 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 and 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 you and you listen as as you're you're saying this and how it's resonating in your head and and you're visualizing that you're bringing a silver string out this this is like one exercise of many there's many visualizations so this this singing exercise deals with a lot of visualization okay Image, imaging imaging and you, you and for example on this one you you know nim 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 you're pulling the silver string out nim 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 and you rotate your pelvis. I see. You sit back up. And uh -huh. you see, you, what I'm doing is that uh, I'm, I'm, my breath is going out. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm crunching my pelvis down. Right, right. To my last breath. And sometimes they put a T on the end of it. Yeah. And then, and when you sit back up, you naturally you have an inhale. Yeah. And so what, what's, been, what's been happening is there's been a focus on how when you sit back up, you naturally inhale because obviously you let all your breath out, right? Yes, yes. But what's actually happening in the physics of what's happening and the applied eurythmia that's happening mm -hmm. is that you're, you're doing what's called the sacral pump. Yes. Or, or, the, or the cool draw is what uh, Mantak Chia talks about. This rocking of the pelvis mm -hmm. is what brings up our kundalini. Right. It brings up our life force. Yeah. Yeah. From that, that second chakra and, and our, our third chakra, all this, it's, it brings it up. And there's even a curative eurythmia exercise where you do an ooh, but you do it in the quality of M, which is very slow moving. Mm-hmm. Mm, that sound. Mm-hmm. And ooh, the sound. And you do a similar thing, and you and you crunch your pelvis. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You do it in this. Come into you see the, so what's happening? So this is what we do when, when, when we procreate. Yes. You see, we're, we're and then when we dance. And that's what Elvis brought to attention. Exactly. He brought. But maybe not with the right uh, background to it. But, but he, he woke everybody up. He woke everybody up to their pelvis. Exactly, exactly. And that's really important for our future because we yes. have to be able to find... Well, we have to include the whole body the and not just body. the upper part. <laughs> right, and so what, what, what I found out, what I, what I observed, then I started observing what I was doing as a eurythmist yeah. and watching eurythmists move, Yeah. There's, there's this tendency to only inhabit your body from here up. Up, right. And, and there's uh, this sort of... Uh, well, it's safe because you don't have to deal with a lot of things that might come up, except they do anyway. <laughs> they come up with it, yeah. Actually, if you deny the, 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 your lower... If you deny that you're a kundalini, you're going to get sick. Yeah. yeah. And, and I was getting... I got very sick in my training also, like mm -hmm. cold hands and feet all the time. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I wasn't... Uh, I was moving around like this all the time, mm -hmm. holding this still. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what I realized when I started watching Eurythmy performances is, was that they would hold themselves upright and elegant and, 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 and picturesque-like and with their veils. And then when it came to after the break, there's like a natural uh, 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 progression, pro progression in, in their performances. After the break, they do humorous, funny, yes. funny parts. Yes, because... <laughs> Well, you know why. Anyway, yeah, so, yeah. so they have funny parts. And then suddenly the eurythmists are down here and, and, yes. they're, and they're playing gnomes and, and animals. Yes, and, they can do a, they can a shoot, do a sheep and a goat or something. Yeah, and, you, and if you're going to do that, you've got you to gotta have your lower movement center. Exactly. Which then means you have to start rocking your pelvis. Yeah. And everybody loves it because... Finally, they, there's the whole human being. There's a whole human being speaking. <laughs> I'm serious. All right. And even if it's right. not funny, they're still going to laugh because they've been held so long with this kind of movement mm -hmm. that they're just dying for, for some the other part of the human being. Yeah, and that's why Alexander Zega goes all the way down to the ground. Yes. I'm... You see, there, there are no limits to what we can do in, in eurythmy as an art. Yeah. Because if eurythmy truly is an art, I should be able to go to the art store mm -hmm. and buy my eurythmy supplies mm -hmm. and go home and do whatever I want to do as a eurythmy artist. And there should be no do's and don'ts. There shouldn't be any. You shouldn't have to be supervised in order to do your rhythmy. If exactly. it's going to be an art. Yeah, yeah. But since it's never being incarnated, mm -hmm. there's this lack of understanding. There's sort of well, a botched initiation that's happening in the rhythmic trainings. Well, they're, not, they're not including the whole human being. Well, and it's very fitting because we are now 100 years into. Because yes. we just had the anniversary, 100 years yes. of your rhythmy. So thank you for bringing that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Somebody's, somebody's uh, inspiring you there. Where's my chalk? Uh, chalk, I just... Uh, well, let's show. find the chalk. Uh -huh.